Uh, coming up, we're going to speak to Simon Calder. Uh, he's going to tell us about an amazing supersonic passenger jet that could, po could possibly get you from London to New York inside of an hour. Which sounds extraordinary. Simon, a very good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Mike. Yeah, um, always uh, good to talk about supersonic flight yes. because it's something I think really excites the travelling public. Did you ever get to travel on Concorde? You know, I know I, you're a young man. I, do you know, I never did. I mean, what I did do, though, is I used to meet an awful lot of celebrities going backwards and forwards from uh, London to New York because I used to be sent out to sort of try and meet them, greet them at the airport uh, and ask them some awkward questions and try and catch them, uh, catch them out, particularly if they're with somebody they shouldn't be with. <laughs> Um, well, look, OK, so 21 <laughs> years ago this month, Concorde had its final flight. You might remember the scenes where you had this parade of three Concords coming into land at yeah. London Heathrow. British Airways shut it down because, frankly, it was ridiculous. You got this plane, which was based on 1950s and 1960s mm. technology, flying in the 21st century, making a heck of a noise, yeah. drinking an incredible amount of fuel and all for a few rich people in fact the boss the then boss of british airways rod ellington on the day he announced it he was shutting it down that particular day flying from new york to london there were just 20 of the 100 seats on board occupied wow so but let's face uh, it british uh, airways was a much better company in those days than it is now so maybe they should have kept it going well, the fares were quite um, off the scale, and I think you can get better value now. But having said that, of course, the fact that we're now pretty much going backwards in terms of uh, journey times in, in flying, mm. um, a lot of people are saying, no, we will pay extra for this. And you've got a company based in Denver, mm. Colorado, called Boom Supersonic. And, of course, uh, part of the problem supersonic flying is that it does have a sonic boom and therefore you can generally only fly over sea um they've got a fantastic aircraft called the xb1 mm. which is a kind of prototype and they're trying to get it to uh go supersonic they've had some really good test results but at the moment just to manage expectations my understanding is that the latest flight saw it going about as high and about as fast as a half decent passenger um yeah. propeller plane so we're not there yet however were this to happen and we're still a long way away from it lots of people have said they're going to bring back concord but uh, nobody actually has um yeah it would um i i, I think an hour from London to New York uh, is is probably some distance away, but certainly halving the time. So it's yeah. no longer seven hours; it's three and a half. Right. Would take us to uh, the days of Concorde, but hopefully with an aircraft which is far less environmentally damaging mm. and far expensive um, as well and much quieter because I, 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 people of a certain age in London will know that you used to at 25 past 10 every evening set your watch by Concorde coming into land yes. at Heathrow a deafening row. It was you just knew. I mean, it was I used Concord. to play golf in in Richmond, uh, a place called Royal Mid Surrey Golf Club, and uh, we would play. Quite, my my father and I quite often would be playing. And we'd see Concord coming in. And I must say, it was a beautiful sight. It was a beautiful plane, oh, yeah. and it was a lovely thing to see. And it didn't it didn't make that much. You never really heard terrible loud noises. It seemed to me, uh, but I know that, that a lot of people didn't like it. But you know, I think supersonic passenger uh, travel is is the way forward. I don't know what effect it would have on the body if you could fly that quickly though i'm not sure what you know about that oh well look i, I was lucky enough to travel on concord once as a courier you could pay a hundred yes i knew people that did that yeah and um you would you turn up at a warehouse in feltham in middlesex near yeah. heathrow um you'd be checked in with a whole load of mail bags right. on ticket and your sole job was to sit there while all this um time sensitive stuff this was of course almost before faxes had been yeah, invented yeah. Um, so news film and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of uh, my photographer friends used to put stuff on Concord and just have somebody take it to London for them, you know. Yeah, well, sure, yeah. Anyway, that's, those, those days are now over, but um, uh, it was a fantastic experience. Yeah. You, get, you, you would leave London just as it was getting dark, and by the time you got to New York, because you'd overtaken the sun, um, you would uh, arrive uh, in pretty good shape and ready for dinner, having had, of course, an extremely elaborate meal yes. and the 
um, head of cabin crew coming round and lighting your free cigar. These were different times, Mike. <laughs> um, it, it was um, astonishing. I used, to, I, used to, I used to proffer a theory that if you continued to fly around the globe sort of backwards, you know, i.e. from here to New York, then to LA, then to Hawaii, then back around to Hong Kong, that you would actually somehow, you would, you would make time and you would actually live longer because, in fact, you were actually going to be, um, you know, coming back on yourself before you knew where you were. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, look, I, I think most people you know, will comment that they never see Mike Graham and Albert Einstein in the <laughs> same room. And I think that was a marvellous exposition of a theory that's even better than his. But, yes, you could see the sun rising in the west mm. because you were chasing the sunset. It was uh, so exciting. Amazing. Now, we haven't got a lot of time. There's a couple of quick things to mention. EasyJet in the news. I'm facing the sun today. I don't know if you've seen this, of a female EasyJet passenger who was given a hotel room to share with a male stranger when her flight was cancelled. Unbelievable stuff. Uh, this was a flight that was due to come in, I think, from Croatia back to Gatwick, um, which was uh, 16 hours delayed for some reason or other. And in the end, at 4 o'clock in the morning, they just gave people, you know, permission to go and stay in a hotel. But this woman turned up, much to her uh, horror, uh, she found out she was made, made to share the room with somebody she didn't know. Well, obviously, that shouldn't ever happen. Um, under air passenger rights rules, EasyJet, when it delays seriously or cancels a flight, they have to provide a hotel. But, yes, the deal is that you, if you're a single woman on your own, you get a hotel room on your own. Yes. And uh, something has gone very badly wrong here. Clearly, at that stage, you just um, have to book your own room and then charge it back to the airline. Yes. So that's a little bit um, embarrassing for them, but at least they provided a hotel. They did. I mean, they've also said the same. They said it was really it shouldn't have happened and so it will never happen again, blah, 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 blah. We haven't really got time to discuss the other thing about how people might be stuck on planes because of the EU. We'll come back to you again and talk to you about that another time. But thank you very much indeed. Simon Calder uh, there reporting into us from what looked like a rather glamorous position. Not quite sure where it was.